Hello, dear friends. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Aries Solar Festival of the 2025 initiative. Um, my name is Alexander Ilchuk, and I welcome you on the behalf of the 2025 initiative coordination group. Thank you for joining us. Today, we, uh, for the first time, doing this webinar on Zoom. So there might be uh, some technical glitches. We apologize in advance for that. So please be patient with us. And um, if there will be any problems with sound or any interference, uh, please, uh, Let's hold the meditative space and we ask all participants to, to mute yourself um, just to avoid sound reverberations. And now we will have a silent alignment. Let's center within and let's visualize our circle. People joining from around the world, linking through space with light and love and focusing with the will to good in our group heart center. From the group heart center, we align with the heart center of the spiritual hierarchy of the planet. Thank you. 
And we open our group receptivity to the energies of Aries. And we bring our focus back to the group heart center. And we hold this visualization of our circle being together, focused in the group heart throughout our webinar today. And so we begin our sharing today. I'm happy to welcome Antonella Nobilio and Philip Lindsay joining our, our circle today. Thank you for being part of this work. Hello, Antonella, Philip, are you there? Hello. Hi. Hello, Adam. Hello, everyone. Uh, hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. special time, special day, special energy. Yeah. In a few hours, we are in the full moon. Yeah. And maybe okay. um, we can ask people not to uh, put their video, like now the people who are coming for the future, I mean. Yes, okay. yes, let's please keep our uh, microphones mute and videos uh, turned off yeah. just to keep the focus on the uh, words and the meanings behind the words and not distract ourselves with our beautiful appearances. <laughs> no, yes, I, I was actually thinking about the, um, the, line, the connection for, for that. So with the video, is, it's less... Uh, the bandwidth, yeah. Mm -mm. So that's why. Okay. Okay, let's begin um, with the energy of Aries, the fire of the beginning. Okay. But I'm honest, huh? Uh huh. There is a, a good uh, Russian. <laughs> okay, mm, so let's begin with this um, quote. The disciple takes his place with those who perceive the needs of the coming cycle, a cycle wherein the new ideas and ideals must be stressed and for which a fight must be made wherein the wider plans for the good of the old must be understood, endorsed, and preached. preached. The new and clearer vision for human living must be grasped, 
and finally brought into being. And the cycle wherein the effort of all members of the new group of world servers must be given to the lifting of humanity's load. And we are in a great load. I'm transmitting from North Italy. <laughs> I know something as New York now, as many of the nations, all the planet, we could say. The intent of the hierarchy is to increase man's capacity for freedom in order to function effectively with that life more abundantly, which the Christ will bring and which demands that the spirit of man be free, free to approach divinity and free also to choose the way of that approach. I found these quotes um, from the Esoteric Advent um, meditation for today. So thank you to Halina and Sheldon. The hierarchy is simply the world of souls that it is consciously aware of the plan, sensitive to the purpose and creatively and constantly impressing humanity with the aim in view of expanding the human consciousness. And this beautiful picture is by Francis Donald. So the new group of world servers, especially in Aries and because of Aries, holds the vision of the plan steady and with focused intention in order to increase man's capacity for freedom. We come forth and from the plane of mind rule. So as any thought form or form, also the new global garden of love and light to be planted has uh, its roots in the fiery world of ideas. Aries is the birthplace of ideas and the true idea is in reality a spiritual impulse taking form, subjective and objective. This is a quote from Esoteric Astrology. So a little um, indication from the, a little, a great indication from the teachings. Ideas which are living impulses or beings are the potencies which produce precipitates and they are attested on the fourth buddhic plane and are the energies made of sound and light which the seven hierarchical ashrams the spiritual souls focus on that plane to associate and transform into forces, so energies into forces on the fifth fiery manasic plane of mind, into ideals, to plant them in the garden of human mentality, desires, and etheric perceptions, and thus work out the plan according to the purpose and will of the planetary logos. What is the method whereby ideas are developed from the moment of impressing the mind of some intuitive? Broadly speaking, this is the master decay with writing, they pass through the following stages. The idea based on intuitive perception, and this is the Buddha higher manas planes, the ideal based on mental formulation and distribution, manas and kama manas, that is desire and mind. The idol based on the concretizing tendency of physical manifestation, kama manas and etheric physical. So synthetically, the scheme of precipitation is this, uh, the ideas on buddhi are fixed as ideas on mental manasic plane, and they can blossom and flourish on astral karmic plane when sufficiently magnetized by creative imagination, and then become living seeds on etheric than physical plane if vitalized by rhythmic visualization in the third eye or in the Ajna center. And which is the main idea and ideal to plant in human planetary garden. As it was presented during last December a webinar. I'm sorry. 
The idea before the race today is the re-establishing upon a higher turn of the spiral of that spiritual relationship which characterized the race in its child state, in its primitive condition. Then, under the wise guidance and the paternalistic attitude of the hierarchy and the initiate priests of the time, men knew themselves to be one family, a family of brothers, and achieved this thought, this through a feeling and a developed sensuous perception. Today, under the name of brotherhood, the same idea is seeking mental form and the establishment of a renewed spiritual relationship, the idea, through training in right human relations, the idea. This is the immediate goal of humanity. This result will be inevitably brought about by means of the cycle of necessity through which we are now passing and the dimly sensed idea will, as a result of dire necessity, impose its rhythm upon the race and thus force the re realization of true being upon all men. All the present ideals expressing themselves through the current ideologies, ideologies will serve their purpose and eventually pass away as all else has passed in the history of the race and will give place eventually to a recognized spiritual relationship, a subjective fellowship, as a defined and expressed brotherhood. These will produce, when sufficiently developed and understood, a form of control and guidance, and the species of government which it is, it is not possible for even advanced thinkers at this time, last uh, century, to grasp. So, and uh, we do need this, a subjective fellowship that will precipitate a mature public opinion or discrimination. The only way to disempower our current fake idols and fake governance of the world. Right human relationships, we know, are based on loving discrimination of what is really good, true, and beautiful for the one humanity. And right human relations will naturally extend to right relations with all life expressing in all the kingdoms of nature. And here is another important quote. Synthesis dictates the trend of all the evolutionary processes today. All is working towards larger unified blocks, towards amalgamations, international relationships, global planning, brotherhood, economic fusion, the free flow of commodities everywhere, interdependence, fellowship of faiths, movement, based upon the welfare of humanity as a whole and ideological concepts which deal with oaths and which militate against division, separation and isolation. That is a good word for now, isolation. So it is only in the immediate interim, a period of 150 years that is the end of this 21st century, and by the end of this 21st century, that delay may seem the rule. Such, however, will not really be the case. The forms through which these new and impending ideas must take shape and manifest have yet to be created, and that takes time for they are built by the power of thought and due process of educating the public consciousness until that consciousness becomes confirmed conviction and demonstrates as an, an immovable public opinion. And our real destiny, the destiny of humanity, is far beyond the short-sighted and short-term conceptions of the lower minds, which still affect the public opinion 
and most of human ordinary life through their three beasts, anger, fear, and doubt, namely separativeness. The head of Medusa, but also in the first labor of Hercules in Aries, the man eating mares or lower minds, which devore Abderis, the unprepared personality. These lower minds are precisely Kamamanas in Sanskrit, astral desire, moving thought, and not vice versa, as it is for the loving intelligence, kindness, and courage of the higher manas of our human souls or egoic bodies, moved by cosmic desire or kama, which means love. A quote from an Italian writer I found today online, the unexpected transforms what the human will has not been able to transform. But now it is a question of reactivating the renewable energy of imagination. So through our creative imagination, let us assert our real destiny as a manifestation of the fourth human hierarchy. Our destiny is a level of harmony, cosmic harmony, which will see us become an outpost of the consciousness of God in the solar system. This is a quote, the complete quote from psychology, esoteric psychology. Um, then, um, so an outpost of the consciousness of God in the solar system, a factor in the solar system bringing about changes and events of a unique nature in the planetary life and lives, and therefore in the system itself, and inducing an interstellar activity. Then we'll see us become a station of light, which will serve not only the planet and not only our particular solar system, but the seven systems of which ours is one. And lastly, a most intense magnetic center in the universe, which will serve the developed lives within the radius of the radiance of the one about whom not might be said, may be said. So, according to the teaching, it is the science of higher thought ruled by the will to good to free us and teach us how to plant the seeds of future in the eternal present of pure service so that the flowers and fruits of the Aquarian garden of brotherhood will blossom and flourish in pure harmony. So I end uh, with this magnificent quote from uh, Community Agni Yoga. Rulership is not in crowns nor in crowds, but is in the cosmic expanse of ideas. And after the talk of Philip and after our dialogue, we will close with a meditation assertion on all of this. Okay, so Philip, if you want to, I mute myself. Oh, here I am. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to draw upon the recent uh, Aries newsletter and some of the themes that I, I tried to convey in that. And so I won't be doing a slideshow here, but uh, there'll be some pictures on the screen. Um, and essentially what this festival is about is setting the, the tone for the new year that's coming up and also of course the main three festivals or the triangle of festivals, Aries, Taurus and Gemini. So sounding the note and getting the, the, uh, the sound right for this first festival is essential. And Quite often when I talk about areas every year in my newsletters, I, I discuss the annually, annually amended planetary plan. And 
of course, this, there was a general purpose and a plan in the mind of Sai Kamara, and um, it is tweaked accordingly, according to human evolution, and by Sai Kamara, no doubt, in concert with the hierarchy. And uh, so Shambhala and hierarchy are really involved deeply at, uh, at uh, this annual amendment of the planetary plan, and particularly in WESAC which we're preparing for even now in Aries, the WESEC Vestal in Taurus. So, and of course, this is part of the divine blueprint that is constantly precipitating into human consciousness and uh, being modified and altered as necessary. So the theme of Aries is this emergence of a subtle idea, a subtle idea, uh, patterned and programmed in the ethers that eventually manifest upon the outer plane as it passes through the 12 zodiac signs during each year. So in this respect, Aries is the place where the initial idea to institute activity takes form. And that's why it is the birthplace of ideas and a true idea is in reality, DK tells us, a spiritual impulse taking form, subjective and objective. So that idea is a frequency embodied in sound and word. Uh, as a sign of beginnings, Aries recalls that biblical injunction, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And this recalls or reminds one of the esoteric law of uh, Aries, which is Mercury, the God of speech, the messenger of the gods. Hence, Aries sounds the note via the sacred word, which is really a matric formula derived from the essentialized seed of the previous cycle that inaugurates the new cycle. And this is something I keep coming back to uh, several times in the recent newsletter because of the recognition of the importance of understanding what that seed contains. Uh, I just said it was the essentialized seed of the previous cycle, but it, it's, it's all that has unfolded in the previous uh, 12 months, in this case anyway, and all that has been learnt, if you like, by humanity in that time. It's like a, this essentialized seed is like a permanent atom, in fact, for the new incarnation of the new year, uh, where we try and take what has been experienced and learnt and that sets, helps to set the tone for the new cycle in Aries. So, um, <clears throat> so these first three signs of Aries, Taurus and Gemini function as a triangle of subjective energies that condition the remainder of the year. There's a precipitation from, uh, from Aries that is, uh, brought into the greater manifestation in Taurus and distributed in Gemini, as, well, as most of us know, in that yearly triangle of signs. Hence, tuning into their qualities through personal reflection, group meditation and service is always reward, rewards the inquiry. There is the Easter festival, the festival of the risen Christ, Taurus, the Wiesek festival, the festival of the Buddha or, or illumination, Gemini, the festival of unification, unifying East and West, carried forward by the Christ. So, um, and it's interesting that most of us are actually in lockdown at the moment, uh, and particularly over Easter, where I am in Portugal right now, no one can leave their towns uh, for the five days of Easter. So we get to deeply reflect even more so during this sacred time, which is a great opportunity, of course, for humanity as a whole, and has been for the last few months, as we all go through this uh, somewhat traumatic uh, transformation. So the word Easter also suggests East, the direction from where the sun rises. Uh, the East is also the Orient, and Aries, of course, is a sign of orientation. Aries is typically in the East, and this reorienting uh, theme is about recalibrating one's direction annually. So we do this individually and collectively. 
most of us are aware of the keynotes of the sign of Aries, four in number. One, to express the will to be and do. This has a lot to do with the first ray of will or power, of course, which comes through Aries. Two, unfold the power to manifest, which brings up the image of Vulcan, the smithy at his forge. Uh, three, enter into battle for the Lord, Mars, uh, the exoteric ruler of Aries. And four, arrive at unity through effort, which brings to mind the polar opposite sign Libra. We're on this Aries full moon, but of course the moon is in Libra. And with this kind of uh, the aggressive energy of Aries, um, it needs to be tempered very much by the sign of Libra, the diplomat and the peacemaker. So in Aries, we have creation, being, activity, strife, and synthesis. And DK tells us that these are the nature of the Lord of the first constellation and enable him to influence our planet to these results. So I'd just like to touch upon uh, the resurrection theme of, of Easter that DK stresses to, to do away with the old uh, perception of the crucifixion and the, the bloody Christ upon the cross. Um, and that it is all about the uh, resurrection and ascension, the magnetic will of the Christ to draw, through, draw everyone through the light of the indwelling Christ in every heart quote unquote, out of the world of material values into the world of spiritual recognitions. And never has there been a greater opportunity for that to occur en masse for the planet as a whole right now. And DK tells us that in the cycle after 2025, which is rapidly approaching, the goal of all religious teaching in the world will be the resurrection of the spirit in mankind. So all the experiences of the previous year, as I said before, with the essentialized seed, uh, especially during the recent Pisces and Lent cycle, the Christian cycle of Lent, when the coronavirus rapidly spread around the world, uh, was quite an amazing period that has preceded this, this Aries period. And um, so I talked about the centralized seed of the previous year, but particularly the Pisces period and the Lent period, I think, is where the real distilling takes place. <clears throat> um, so Aries plants this seed. Aries is the seed sower who throws his seeds into the furrows. And uh, some of them land on fertile ground, of course, as they say in the Bible, and some do not. But Aries plants the seed and sounds the note of daring and optimism. And this is all about the sun's exaltation in Aries. And of course, we know that the sun rules the heart, the organ of love wisdom and of courage that eliminates the so-called fear virus. So thanks to this incredible once in 500 year conjunction of Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn on January the 10th, 2020, humanity is in now what the WHO organization has called the biggest crisis since World War II, sowing uncertainty and fear, but also the presage of a new beginning. Hence, we must sow the seeds of courage and of hope for 2020. To remind others that there is a planetary plan and that hierarchy will soon return to restore the plan on Earth. So we have this marvelous word, lockdown, such a great word for Saturn, who is uh, temporarily sentencing everyone to a self-isolating prison, recalcitrant humanity sent to its room, you could say. And of course, accompanying all this has been many streams of thought and speculation, speculation depend, uh, about what is actually happening right now. And it's 
quite chaotic in many ways. And it's the, the work of the new group of world service to really stabilize and steady that, that, um, that alarming kind of um, impulse that is going around the world. Um, and so we have to observe these things flowing by ourselves in a, in, a, in a river of consciousness, if you like. Of course, the best way to observe them in a detached way is by meditation. Uh, we observe, but we do not engage fully with them. They all have their threads of truth, and we maintain our detachment nonetheless. Of course, through visualization, uh, we can invoke the creative imagination and meditation and, and protect ourselves etherically. Our etheric health uh, has, has been discussed on various forums recently through visualizing the colors of the etheric body, uh, strengthening the etheric web, uh, vitamin supplements, and many other uh, remedies that can strengthen the health and, and uh, immune system. These are pretty much the ABCs of, of good health period. So I'm not going to spend too much time on that. Um, another factor that I looked at in the uh, newsletter was Aries and the, the corona or the coronation initiation, as in corona initiation. And how the uh, corona means crown and relates to the crown chakra and the awakening of the head center. Um, and again, we have the sun as exalted in Aries. It's solar corona is an aura of electrical plasma. And the coronation itself is the placement of a crown upon a monarch's head. And there's a special anointing that takes place, which is, which is quite an esoteric ceremony that links God, if you like, with uh, the nation or the populace. So the coronation ceremony is therefore a kind of initiation. And to go through that uh, coronation, the monarch has to learn the law. It has to learn the constitution. Uh, and likewise, humanity now uh, going through a kind of a coronation, or I think the first initiation, another great wave of people taking the first initiation on mass on this planet right now, due to this crisis. Uh, and uh, I lost my place there. Oh yeah, they have to learn. They are being. Uh, everyone has the opportunity now to re really reflect very deeply on. Uh, the spiritual laws which govern them from all their different traditions. Uh, in fact, many people are returning to those traditions because of the, uh, the fear and the uh, trauma that is happening right now and questioning very deeply uh, what they've been doing in their lives. So, um, and of course, Pluto and Vulcan rule the first initiation, and Pluto has been quite potent at the moment, going through its, through Capricorn, and making various conjunctions with Saturn and also Jupiter for three more conjunctions this year. So, the first ray, and of course, the first ray comes through Capricorn very powerfully. We are in a very potent first ray kind of cycle right now. And of course, Aries is the first ray sign par excellence. And it's a sign of new life and yet a sign of death and purging. And Pisces, which precedes it, starts that, that uh, destruction process, the destroying process through Pluto, the esoteric ruler. And that paves the way for the, the for the new life in Aries, but Aries also has a relationship to death and clearing the way forward by a Vulcan and Pluto. What Pluto destroys, Vulcan builds back in anew. And so the new garden of ideas uh, uh, theme of Aries 
is interesting to, to reflect upon when we look at the newly sprouted seed that resembles the airy symbol, the horns of a ram, uh, and the power that a new seed exerts in pushing up through the soil to the surface is quite, quite amazing. And here again is the, the solar vitality of the Aries exalted sun that attracts the blind seeds pushing towards the light through the lunar textured earth. And really all life, biological and spiritual, is drawn to the outer or the inner sun. So, um, seeing how much time I have here. Um, we'll go for another five minutes, I think. Um, I want to talk about what is initiated in Aries that has its consequence, uh, karmic consequence, if you like, in the opposite sign of Libra. So Aries is this original idea that goes forth. And it can be a well-formed idea, a well-honed idea, uh, or it can be less so or partially, and therefore the consequences will be commensurate with the original idea. So um, Aries rules the head and brain, and as a mental sign, a, a fire sign, so seed ideas that will come to fruition in Libra. Hence the karma of thought, the consequences of thought, and the quality of speech that brings thoughts into manifestation. So again, we recall Mercury's esoteric rulership of Aries, the god of speech, the messenger of the gods, carrying a message from the highest self or the mind of the divine. So we have ideas that become thought forms, that become speech, that become the word made flesh. There is a, a progression there. And Libra is regarded esoterically as a practical manifesting sign due to Saturn's influence, where Saturn is exalted in Libra. Um, and of course, through the esoteric rulership of Uranus, of Libra, the ruler of the seventh ray of organization. So, um, Mercury again, though, however, the esoteric ruler of Aries, the ruler of the fourth ray of harmony through conflict, is the artist, the musician, the storyteller. And storytelling or parables convey the message to many different levels of consciousness. <clears throat> And we know the well-known parable from the Bible uh, that I touched upon before. Um, Behold, a sower went out to sow, and it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside, and some fell on stony ground, some seed fell among the thorns, other seed fell on good ground. And uh, it goes on to say, this is from Mark, Mark 4 in the New Testament, where Jesus says to them, the sower sows the word, and these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan, or the lower mind, comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground, who when they hear the word immediately, receive it with gladness. And they have no root in themselves, and so endure only for a time. And he goes on and um, uh, says, then he says, uh, uh, afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises from, for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Now these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word and who, and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things, entering in, choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. And then he says, of course, but these are the ones sown on good ground. Those who hear the word accept it and bear fruit. Etc. So this parable is instructive of the manifestation process re has required uh, that requires a disciplined, focused mind to bring it into manifestation and receive a bountiful harvest. Of course, Saturn is the ruler of the throat center, the seat of the mental body. Therefore, at the beginning of every year in Aries, individual and group minds must be very attentive to the greater idea that emanates from the mind of the divine, from Shambhala, by hierarchy, to the new group of world servers, who can act upon it and transmit it to humanity. Hence the old adage, of course, you reap what you sow. 
And with regard to the theme of this, uh, this uh, webinar, uh, the garden, um, we create a garden within the mind. You know, gardens on the outer plane are conducive to peace, strength, beauty, reflection, meditation. Um, and therefore the inner garden is about creating an integration and wholeness of many elements and ideas, complementary to one another, taking the evolution of ideas, blending and synth synthesizing them with many other varieties. A beautiful mind place of inner retreat and meditation that constantly enriches itself and its surroundings and his aroma permeates and radiates through those surroundings to family, friends, community and the culture at large. And so gardens can be created by community or a team of gardeners. And we have many gardeners here today uh, at, this, at this webinar. And, um, and who are part of the new group of world servers. And we'll keep building this garden with beauty and magnificence for all to enjoy. And I close with a quote from Rumi. He says, if the foot of the trees were not tied to the earth, they would be pursuing me. For I have blossomed so much, I am the envy of the gardens, unquote. I think that'll do for now. We can open up to, to the discussion and questions. That's a beautiful poem. Yes. <laughs> thank you, Philip. <laughs> Amazing. Um, uh, thank you, Philip, and thank you, Antonella. And yes, we are now inviting uh, our circle to um, join this uh, conversation. And um, as usual for that, you would have to raise your hand. There is, should be a function on your uh, control panel. It's, it looks different than go to webinar panel, but it should be somewhere there. And if you cannot find it, just use the um, chat box and that letting us know that you want to be unmuted and we will unmute you. We finally figure out how to uh, mute participants that people wouldn't be able to um, interfere with their microphones. So if uh, uh, Daniela and Amira, you could please uh, watch for the raised hands and allow people to speak. And Robert says that the raise hand is option is under participant step. <clears throat> so I was uh, before some um, questions or uh, contributions uh, um, arrive. I was just reflecting, for example, tonight we are in 132 uh, people or minds or, and hearts and we are uh, orientated or concentrated um, on the same goal which is uh, to focus this uh, Aries energy to help uh, uh, the planet and humanity and um, and we are using uh, never than before these instruments made of sound and light which is uh, uh, a webinar or a video and so on so really we are uh, collaborating with the devas of sound and light which are the real matters or energies of the ideas and um, so it's really a creation uh, every time um, two or three of you will uh, gather in my name, I will be with you. Um, so it's really um, this um, realization of um, our 
possibility and responsibility to um, use the power of thought or loving thought to create um, solutions and um, the future of harmony for which we have been created. So we have great, a deep gratitude comes from our heart. Um, also gratitude to the technology that the Aquarius age is um, offering us. It's a real glimpse of the technological revolution for Aquarius and also yeah. group work and participating in this great group mind, group heart uh, focus in areas. Yeah, and towards brotherhood <laughs> and the distant world. So it's really Aquarian. I think Helena has a hand up there. Helena? Uh, yes, so. Uh, well, to be hearing you both, dear friends. Hello. <laughs> Either <laughs> one of you. <laughs> Um, love to mention the significance of the recent alignment with um, the, the Pleiades and uh, the Venus. So Venus Pleiades yeah. conjunction. You know, as I was thinking about this earlier, when it was happening on uh, April three, four, or five in, in that time frame. You know, I was thinking of um, Antonella, you're talking about right now the um, the Davic life and the importance of yes, yes, the connecting with our higher nature. And of course, Venus is where the solar angel, you know, comes through and very important um, manifesting through our own Venus in the chart and also the significance of Venus, Earth. Um, revolving around the sun and so that this happened you know, right here in this time frame, um, I find really extraordinary. So is there anything that either one of you would like to mention um, to bring that energy into the group mind right now? Well, uh, you can go first if you want to enter now, or do you want me to? No, no, no. Uh, well, um, it was, uh, there were so many things going on right now. It was just like a three-day window when Venus was going across Alcyon in the Pleiades, uh, the Star of Intelligence, and um, and uh, several other appellations that DK gives it. And, of course, Venus, esoterically, is the fifth ray uh, distributor, and the Pleiades is the third ray, so it's a very powerful combination. And it occurs just before, well, in fact, the, the uh, Alcyon is in, is in Gemini now. It was in late Taurus for a long time, of course, but it's still sidereally in, in Taurus. But nonetheless, um, uh, what followed on straight from that, and does every year, of course, because Venus comes around annually, uh, it entered Gemini, which it is the esoteric ruler of, and will stay in Gemini for an extraordinary long time right up until august because it goes retrograde during that period and it's probably the best one of the best placements for venus and the zodiac it's the esoteric ruler of gemini it has a lot to do with uh, uh, loving relationships connecting uh, with people uh, with nations um, talking to each other uh, all those kind of things i mentioned this in the newsletter I think, or was it the next one? I can't keep track this stage. <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway, um, the, it's come as an extraordinarily important time of crisis, of planetary crisis. Venus and Gemini is just, you can't want better for right communications between, within nations, between nations, between individuals, between groups. Um, and uh, this will be going right through to August the 7th. So it's quite a long period of time and uh, will complement vastly, I think, the, um, the reflective uh, situation that, that humanity is being forced into at the moment. So there's just a few thoughts there. Yeah. Um, Juan, I would like to just kind of emphasize that Elcyone is said to be the star of the individual 
That's right. Yeah, and so for building on that thought of the individual and what is the individual's response to the crisis. And then, of course, if we expand the idea of the individual to mean, you know, the higher identity, what is our higher individual identity? You know, we are, we are spirit, we are monads, and the identity of humanity uh, in relationship to hierarchy um, during this crisis. So that is uh, so important with the ideas you just put forth. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you have to start the individual cooperating in relationship within Gemini, the twins, and the twins representing higher self, lower self, you and the other, and so forth, and, and bringing together all the opposites upon the mental plane and creating harmony and unity and beauty, because Venus is the, you know, the planet of beauty. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I can add this. Uh, of course, uh, you can see the chart here, uh, right? In the screen? Oh, no. no? You need to unpause your screen, yeah? No, no I did. Oh, okay, okay. Resume share. Okay. Yes, now we can see. Ah, okay, thank you. Yeah, so this is the um, Venus conjunct Alcione, this F. And um, this is a position where in 2025 will be exactly Uranus that now is here in Taurus. And in uh, five years, he will be here just conjunct to Alcione, which is, and um, yeah. The start on the individual, it's uh, like a source or an origin of uh, the substantial nature of the solar system. And it's said that the six and seven solar system uh, turn around this um, origin, this um, cluster. And so it's like um, a center of centers. And uh, the fact that the initiator Uranus in 2025 will be in conjunction there, um, it's just good to, to fix now that Venus, uh, which is uh, ruling the sacral center with uh, Uranus, is transiting through it. Uh, it's like preparing a way uh, for this uh, higher system of systems, which is our future, which is the unite, the esoteric United Nation is a, a system of international uh, harmonic relationships, is the relation with the other humanities on Venus first of all. Well, we know that the humanity on Venus is already able to think by love. It's free from the lower manas and is focused on the higher manas and is inspired by Bodhi. So it's really our solar angel or the earth. Mm. So to check out where is Venus and as you said here now in the, the sign that he, she rules esoterically, well, <laughs> it's just good to open um, this uh, field of spatial uh, and spatial relationships. And it mm. relieves from this Pluto and Jupiter and, and, mm. and Saturn and Mars uh, stellium here down, down in the chart. So we know that yesterday, uh, two days ago, was the exact conjunction of Pluto and Jupiter, which is a first ray and second ray, love, the power and love. And... And we have this Saturn that now sees this uh, Mars that is going away at last. So we hope that uh, also this coronavirus is going to slowly fade away uh, because Saturn Mars, we know, is like uh, karma and the trigger of karma, which is Mars, which is the desire that brings forth the wheel of Vulcan, which is the heart of the sun. So, um, yeah, my point is that um, we had the maximum of uh, intensity uh, at the equinox where um, there was also Mars in conjunction with the, the first, second and third ray. So now probably hope, 
hopefully is not uh, becoming as was Italy. Uh, I hope that the world uh, is not to know what we we went through. And we're still in a total lockdown, uh, but uh, seems that the situation is going better and China is better, so <laughs> hopefully the karma is releasing. I think the next eight weeks is going to see most of the European nations and the USA hit their peaks uh, with this, hopefully. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I think Sheldon has something to say. If you uh, finish, Anto. Well, I just wanted to um, thank you both for this beautiful and <laughs> beauty and wisdom coming through here in the in this full moon period of Aries, and I just. Taking it down to the somewhat personal level, um, also, um, turns out that uh, I do have Aries pretty prominent in my chart. I was born <laughs> in Aries yes. and on the first, and and I <clears throat> always had a hard time in the past seeing goodness in Aries. But I, I must say that um, what you what you've been saying so so confirms what's happening for me these days in terms of. Um, as, as opposed to fear that, that it's so easy to move into with these great changes, the, the, the hopeful possibilities of, of change that, that, are, that are propping up in terms of how we treat one another today, how we work, work together in spite of these differences, and what can come in the not too distant future as far as the yeah. changes in relationships, and so as you were talking about, uh, between nations, so it reminds me of what resurrection is all about. It's 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 bringing to bringing to light the the, the true life that, that that wants to come again in the future, not come again, but come for the first time in a sense at a higher level in the future, the letting go of the past, and so it's become so clear in this life what we don't need, <laughs> what isn't working, yeah. Yeah. What, what is what is so supposedly of the old that we can let go of with some ease. And I think that's what, what your talks have been uh, bringing forth is in these energies that we swim in today, and it becomes very full as, as we move forward, um, all these possibilities uh, for what can take place if we hold that, it's not just a hopefulness, it's, it's, it's a light that's right here. Saying, look, yeah. here's, what, here's what is, here's what can be, and uh, we need to move in that direction. And as we do, every step that I take or we take, thinking along these lines or being in this way of relationship, um, frankly, I feel joy. So I just wanted to share that. Thank you, Sean. Yeah. Yeah. I, think, I think Julia had something to say there. Julia Tanoski. Yes, hello. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yes, we can hear you, Julia. Hello. Hi. Hi, Julia. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah. Hi, Probably. Philip. Yes. <laughs> Lovely to be with you today. Uh, one thing that occurred to me, uh, being in my 70s and looking at the transits um, and reading Robert Hand on the transit, the Uranus square Pluto, and he says that um, notice parallels in the lives of your friends of this age, uh, those of us who have Pluto at around five degrees Leo, um, which is squaring uh, Uranus um, at this time. And he says, um, because this transit affects a whole generation, the drastic changes you encounter now may be partly the result of social and e economic forces beyond your control. Um, the this is a chance for a huge clearing away from your life and um, change will be forced upon you uh, if you have not already begun to change voluntarily. Interestingly, in the New Zealand chart, Uranus is in the seventh house of relationships um, mm. and uh, Venus is the sole ruler, esoteric ruler of New Zealand. Uh, yeah. which is where I live. So um, I think it'll be uh, very interesting to see changes um, uh, for our, my generation in the 
70s and um, looking towards our relationships. Yeah. Um, and particularly interesting um, changes because it's over the 70s who are being um, focused on with regard to uh, stay at home, <laughs> be safe, yeah. and looking after um, the elderly in the community. Um, I just find all of that very interesting. Indeed. Now, you want to say something into that? No, just the fact that um, um, the Pluto and Jupiter and Saturn in Capricorn is so rare. I checked when it happened last time and it was in uh, uh, the, the end of the 13th century this uh, presence of the free race of aspect in this sign of initiation and the last time and before was in the sixth, sixth century and before we can't find another um, presence of the free in Capricorn for uh, millennia so it's really something that um, that changes everything because it's like the triad being at the summit. And it's like uh, mind, Saturn, heart, Jupiter, and will uh, or head, a, like a triangle, closing the triangle, the triad, the sacred triad. Uh, so uh, it's like a humanity hierarchy and Shambhala uh, can use this um, triangle of uh, powerful energies to to create a new form because uh, triangle is the first form is the is the form of synthesis you were yes. saying something uh, I was going to just talk about the Saturn Pluto um, cycle that has triggered off what's going to probably be the biggest recession the world has ever seen um, it's all been forecast for many years, particularly by many financial pundits for this year. And we all wondered how that was going to happen. And coronavirus has brought it because through massive unemployment, uh, huge injections of funds into various countries, uh, it could very well uh, set a, um, create a financial reset for the whole planet. Uh, that is more equitable and fair, uh, ultimately, but it also can be set up a, a conflict between the more selfish forces uh, and the more altruistic ones. But Uranus definitely has a role within all that in its seven-year cycle in Taurus between the age, uh, between 19, excuse me, uh, uh, 2019, uh, 2018, I should say, and 2025. Um, and... You know, this has been talked about for, uh, Uranus uh, resetting the, the uh, or reforming the, the whole financial system. So that's going to certainly work. Uh, I think Uranus will certainly be present in its influence in helping to reform the financial system that Saturn and Pluto have made the first really big dent in. Mm. And of course, Uranus is the plant of revolution and, and radical change. And for those uh, like Julia, who in their 70s, at that, 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 um, that age group, they're, um, they're really feeling that uh, massive um, influence of uh, Uranus square Pluto. Yeah. Yeah. And yes, and also because Taurus, we know, um, is concerning uh, energy, and uh, light money. with money, which is mining, which is the third aspect of the third ray. So it's light, uh, exactly. And I was putting um, this date, which is January, 2021, just to show the fact that from now till then, we will have this Mars, which is really the trigger um, and is ruling the astral, um, body and the solar plexus of humanity if we like and it will be in Pisces many many months uh, for the months to come and it will be in conjunction here with Uranus in Taurus only in January 2021 
and uh, to the star Hamal, which is really the head of the ram. So um, I think that this date could um, sign a sort of peak of this um, transit of Mars, uh, many months uh, retrograde also um, in, uh, in Pisces and then Aries. And then finally it comes in Taurus in conjunction with uh, Uranus. So probably you, we could see something maybe about the financial system or the uh, health system change. Yeah, and also um, in the USA's horoscope, uh, it is on its Pluto return, the first ever Pluto return since the United States' uh, inception in 1776. Mm. And, and Pluto is in the second house of money. So uh, this has been coming a long time and astrologers have been watching this Pluto return, but this is, Pluto is actually opposite Mercury and Cancer. And so now Saturn and Pluto are starting to activate the opposition between Mercury and Pluto, between now and the actual Pluto return, which is about 2021, 2022, I think. So we're seeing the breakdown of the entire edifice in many ways of, of what has crystallized in the last 250 years in, in uh, the great nation of the United States. And the, the financial reform is going to be part of that. It's going to be a huge part of that. I think Karima had a question. Uh, yes. Um, Antonella, uh, how much time yeah. will we need for the meditation, for the final meditation? Oh, five minutes, tw t 10 minutes, something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And um, yes, and I wanted also to mention this because uh, it's, I think, is the great date of the official beginning <laughs> of the age of Aquarius in the sense that uh, the conjunction between uh, Sun Vulcan in the center, Jupiter, the heart, the solar love, and set on the solar light for the first time um, since the beginning of the 15th century will be conjunct at the beginning of Aquarius. Mm. So, and they will be in conjunction. So again, the first, second and third ray in, in the same direction means and the same goal point in the cosmos, uh, it will happen for the next 100, uh, 180 years till the end of the um, to end the, so the, the last conjunction will, it will be in uh, 2199 so the next 200 years we will have conjunction between the solar love and solar light um, in the in, in the airy signs and it was for the last 200 years on all in uh, earth science and we had yes. the two world wars so now really we have to to trust the fact that the the air is going to be lighter mm -hmm. for the next two centuries yes that's that's the real mantra is that the um, the the light that uh, of aquarius that this saturn jupiter conjunction in uh, december and on the, right on the solstice as well, uh, mm -hmm. will bring, and also so complementary to Uranus going through Taurus because Jupiter and Saturn will uh, start to, when they go through Aquarius in 2021, mm -hmm. will be aspecting transiting Uranus and Taurus when Uranus, of course, rules Aquarius. Mm -hmm. So they'll be most complementary, I think, in terms of the tensions and transformations that will take place in that year. Yeah. So, uh, so, Karima, you are unmuted. Uh, yeah. um, hi there. Hello. So hi there. I'll have hi, a, a quick answer to someone in the chat asked about uh, the use of the violet flame at this time. And I'm a little puzzled why I haven't seen more of uh, that in, in some beautiful uh, gatherings of large groups bringing in light from you know, great central sun and through their galactic center and into our own uh, solar system here. And just using light itself, which is perfect and wonderful. But um, 
to use the violet flame, to me, it seems it would be the perfect time. Um, and unless I miss something, and that does happen, uh, St. Germain is to be the master of the Piscean age, much like uh, Jesus was of, of, I mean, I'm sorry, of the Aquarian age, much like Jesus was of, of the last 2,000 years. And so perhaps this has not really been a hands-off yet, um, but there is so much power in understanding uh, and using the violet flame. Uh, it's used to kill cancer cells, you know, on a practical scientific level, it's being used so people can more relate that it will work on a larger scale. It kills cancer cells. They, they use it in hospitals. It's the only thing, ultraviolet light, that will kill SARS. Uh, I think that's what that's called in hospitals. It's, you know, pretty deadly. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, but it's like the cosmic, cosmic vacuum cleaner of karma. And it's, it's the fastest vibrating light. It's closest to uh, the essence of uh, the vibration of matter, the essence of matter. So I'm just wondering why we're not invoking it. Well, Uranus is really uh, another name of what you are just talking about. Because Uranus' seventh ray is just uh, ruling Aquarius, which is ruling the seventh hierarchy, which is ruling exactly this uh, violet power of uh, um, healing. So thank you for uh, um, naming it. because That's why we, we are um, invoking now through you. And we are all invoking. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Katja, I think you had something to say. Katja? Yes, I'm here. Oh, thank you. Also on a practical level, if you could maybe give us some pointers. Because at this time we're meditating, I think all of us, invoking that shift of consciousness in humanity that will allow to actually sustain all those energies in a positive way. So maybe, I, I remember only one triangle, which is um, somewhere DK gives us uh, Virgo, or actually Pisces, Virgo, and uh, Leo. But uh, maybe you could say what, what energies could be used during those meditations, especially now. Um, what, what meditations did you mean, Katya, the visualization of violet light and, and all the shades of violet? Is that what you're talking about? No, I'm not talking about violet light. I'm talking about uh, the path of shift of consciousness of humanity mm. towards the values of the soul, mm. connecting with the soul. Uh, yeah, and what did Virgo, Pisces, Leo have to do with it? Um, DK, it's somewhere gives it as a triangle that yeah. is supportive of that shift in consciousness. Well, there are many. Maybe you yeah. you're talking about uh, um, Leo, Pisces, and Capricorn um, transmitting the power of a great beer, a Pleiades, and Sirius, Sirius and Pleiades. That one, no. Just in regard to to humanity waking up. Um, mm -hmm. Leo has a lot to do with the first initiation. So um, that certainly may come into it in that respect. I, I'm not, I'd have to see the exact quote to really comment on that. But besides the quote, uh, what, what would you use in the meditations now? To help the shift, you mean? Yes, in mm. astrological energies, yeah. Well, to invoke the energies of the sign that we're in at any time, I think, is, is a key factor. And mm -hmm. maybe certain other plants like Venus and Gemini, for instance, uh, right now. Mm -hmm. um, it's the first thing that comes to mind. Yeah, the heaven teaches that there are many, many possibilities to use the energies of the heaven. If you use the 12 signs, it's like using the power of hierarchy, which uses the 12 uh, petals of the lotus 
of the heart of the sun. If you use the alignment with the stars, it's more a monadic uh, uh, attempt to focus uh, towards the direction towards the cosmos. If you use the alignments between planets, it's uh, an energy maybe closer to humanity. So as uh, Philip said, for example, the transit of Venus, which is our solar angel going through uh, the twins uh, and so on. So it, it's uh, it's a science. So it's not um, uh, if you put the question very precise, you can have the very precise answer. What energy uh, invoke and evoke for the helping the shift of humanity is um, I, I find is a bit general because the shift of humanity is held by many many um, factors. Uranus in Taurus is uh, helping this shift because Taurus is related to um, Shambhala, Pluto, and Earth, especially. So the, the transit of initiator, which is Uranus in Taurus, is helping this shift. But so invoking the energy of Uranus, wow. Other could <laughs> say, oh, invoke first, second, and seventh, seventh ray, the triangle of synthesis. Okay, it's good, uh, uh, the same. No. So I think that uh, it's really, for example, for astrologers, they follow, uh, we follow the heaven day by day and use the energy that uh, uh, constantly update and set because it's like the breath of God. And to follow that is like to follow the plan that the masters write, but it's our um, love and key word key to to follow the breath of God. Okay. Sorry. No, no, go on. I think Katja, it's the key is to keep it simple, um, especially if you're doing group meditations uh, and the simplicity of that, and, and as Antonella said before, where one or two are gathered in my name, that kind of uh, uh, that sort of energy coming together, but certainly invoking the, the sign of that month that the sun is in, whether it be Aries, Taurus, Gemini, and so forth. Um, and the other factor to be careful of, of course, is, is, is uh, as they say, careful what you wish for, because um, quite often, uh, individually, uh, many individuals are not suited for invoking certain energies, particularly of the first ray, for instance. And um, the energy can go through them and, and distort. Um, so it's always much safer, of course, to, to invoke energies through group meditation. Um, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. Mm. Well, for example, there was proposed uh, some days ago um, a meditation because a portal was supposed to open and uh, offer a global healing, uh, total healing. Okay, if you are um, any is called by this kind of, uh, it's good to do. But um, to me, for example, is more com commercial to say, well, it's so, and a portal is opening to uh, offer a global healing. Well, now it's in the eternal moment, in the eternal present that is possible, but uh, portals open each time, for example, the two planets are in conjunction. So two days ago, there was, uh, there were Jupiter and Pluto, for example, in conjunction, but in January, there was this Extending conjunction between Saturn and Pluto, and in November, December, we will have Jupiter and Saturn. They are all portals. What we, I, my experience is that we don't have to um, believe that uh, uh, opportunities um, are offered by humans. I think that. Um, <laughs> any moment is good to make. Yeah, a revolution. Ever present now, yes. Yes, here and now, uh, everywhere and ever. And, and the fact that now this coronavirus and this global crisis is obliging us to reflect, to stay, to suffer also, to lose uh, our brothers. Um, it's really, as Philip said, it seems really the first initiation in action. 
and uh, but at a at a global level because the case says that humanity is already taking the first initiatives but now it seems really like uh, a movie a movie projected where we are actors so it's really a great turning point this one and we are honored and uh, we have to stay at, you said katia some practical things my practical best um, action here and now is to keep in the joy of the here and now whatever my feelings or thoughts are proposing me i observe them and i detach because i um i as a, a functionary of service uh, to to the good the beautiful and true I know that hierarchy needs joy. It's our peace or harmony, essential yeah. harmony. And our we rock. have to offer this. Our rock of joy um, and rock and roll. <laughs> 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 yes, we have, we have like, uh, to be joyful and like uh, a, a bunch of um, new group of world service dancing rock and roll in <laughs> our souls have to be <laughs> like that very energetic and it is very Aries uh, and Marcy yeah. <laughs> this <Yeah>. suggestion <laughs> well, thank you all yeah yes, the joy I think the joy is um, you know when there's a lot of dark stuff around and mm. you can't really find your way through the mass of thought forms and, and being hit with this and that article or video that people send you endlessly uh, and just wading through that, that great uh, field of, of, of stuff. Uh, really the key is just, it, it, I know it's a platitude, but meditation will bring you right back to that point of joy uh, where you just let it all go and, and, and find your center again. Um, just on, on the first initiation thing, uh, theme again, uh, DK did mention in the Blue Books that uh, masses of humanity went through the first initiation during the World War, which is esoterically World War One and Two combined. And now authorities are saying that this is the biggest crisis since World War Two, and indeed there is another opening of the gate, if you like, for this first initiation, another wave of humanity coming through and taking the first initiation, I think. And yeah. this will be an incredible impetus uh, uh, towards 2025 in, in terms of uh, really supporting hierarchies externalization. Uh, so we, we're living in very exciting times, but at the same time, all the, the, the older forces of the Piscean age are, are fighting tooth and nail to try to stop that occurring. And hence the confusion, the chaos, the conflict that's going on right now. Yeah, and I invite everyone, if you haven't already done, many people have written very interesting things in the chat. And I don't know if we have time to read, but I think you can scroll and read. And if someone uh, wants to um, tell to everybody uh, what he or she wrote, please uh, use your voice to do that. We... No, uh, very, very cool. Uh, it's late. Actually, at the, at the, at the, at the time of uh, we're supposed to end already the webinar, I suggest we now uh, have our meditation mm -hmm. and um, we just have extended uh, uh, silence uh, after that. And uh, if anyone would still would like to sh share something, we could have uh, extra few minutes after the meditation. Okay. So if you, Antonella, could lead us in the meditation. And I forgot one more thing. I supposed to announce the coming webinars. So probably somewhere in that extended silence, I will do that. Okay. Okay. So it will be vertical. Um, and uh, we will use some uh, harmonic intervals to help us to rhythm our 
united uh, breath and unified rhythm. Okay, so let's close our eyes and open our hearts. Let us be one at the center of our heads. That mental heart, which is symbol of the synthesis of power, love, and light. Here and now, from this place of fire, at the summit of the pyramid, we assert the unity and oneness of humanity. In this point of tension, which is a unified field of love and light and harmony, the will to good anchors as a, as a driving force, direct to reestablish the primary idea of brotherhood on earth, our beloved garden. through the idea of the right human relationships, through an increasing social and international fraternity and enlightened public opinion. Here and now, always and everywhere, through our evolving creative imagination, let us love and hold in the light this vision of humanity as the planetary server of the divine plan. Here and now, always and everywhere, let us vitalize this image and goal in the third eye with united breath and unified rhythm with the higher septenaries and in agreement with the heavenly energies and cycles.
here and now, always and everywhere, let us assert into the hearts and minds of men. Love is the universal motive. Brotherhood is the community of love. Let the one humanity be will to liberation. Let it be a magnet of solar love. Master, help us to do your work. Okay, gratitude to us. Okay, if, if anyone wants to add something or it's not easy after <laughs> our focus. Thank you, Antonella. Thank you, Philip. I have something to add, may I? Um, yep, yeah, Philip, you wanted to say something? Oh, no, no. <laughs> um, yeah. um, I invite um, our participants to join the daily meditative vigil that Katya mentioned. It's a subjective link up uh, daily at 8 p.m. GMT. Uh, the focused intention for that the current crisis would serve the purpose of expansion of collective consciousness for humanity and also for, for forwarding the gratitude and light and love towards all people who serve on the front lines of this crisis. Um, and in the chat window, I put the, the link to join the webinar, which will actually, no, it's not a webinar. It's, it's a, meet, a link up, daily link up that we have online for those who would like to do it together. Um, and this strengthen the field of the group uh, presence. Uh, so it will start in 20 minutes. And also I want to invite uh, you to join our coming webinars. Uh, it's uh, the next new moon webinar will be on 
April 23rd and uh, it will be the new moon of Taurus and we will focus on the sustainable development goal for quality education. So we invite you to join uh, this uh, cyclic meditation uh, on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And for the Vesak Festival, we have a special ritual that we invite you to join. Ritual of planting a garden, planting a global garden. You, uh, those of you who participated in our Equinox webinar uh, probably heard uh, that's the topic for this year, the 2025 initiative chosen. Uh, mm, growing the garden, planting the garden. And we actually invite you to join the ritual that's between the new moon and the full moon of Taurus. Each of you would plant a tree or a shrub or any plant, making it as a ritual, your individual intimate ritual finding the best time to do that in your time in your climate zone. And that's when we come to the Vesak festival, we could come together in a dedication ritual when we will link with our plant that we planted in the previous weeks and uh, dedicate that plant to the global garden, visualizing together the global garden of one humanity that we help to grow. And also remembering that our souls, are, that we ourselves is, are the trees with the roots in heaven in our souls and the flowers in earth. So that webinar for Global Garden Dedication will be on May 5th. And then on the exact time of the Vesak on May 7th, we invite you uh, to join the exact time, full moon meditation with the ritual of blessing water, up to which that water we will offer to our plants and to devas and animals and all living beings. Uh, we will email more information about this coming ritual. So please stay tuned and in this coming weeks before the new moon, just think about the plant that you want to bring to the global garden. Freja. <laughs> <laughs> I've chosen. <laughs> oh, you got it already. Good. Yes. <laughs> so stay tuned for further instructions, Antonella. <laughs> yes, <Number> yes. <laughs> sure. <laughs> So, are there okay. any raised hands or anyone? I don't know. You are the expert. <laughs> but I was just talking. <laughs> I didn't look at my screen. So, yeah, okay. Any, any no, hands so far. So, if any last words that you, uh, both of you would like to share with us, please. Last words, I mean, for this webinar. <laughs> Om. Om. <laughs> Last man standing. <laughs> Thanks everyone for turning up. It was great to see all those familiar names there on the, on the uh, list of participants and uh, making this meditation and gathering happen. It's a joy to be here. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Gratitude, the best flower, says Agni Yoga, <laughs> yeah. of our soul. Yeah. Gratitude, much love. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Okay. Ciao. <laughs> there is more, uh, one chat, let's see. Joy and gratitude to be here with everyone. Thank you, Risa. Yeah, and wonderful chats. Thank you. So I think so, uh, we're closing, right? Yeah. Okay. And 
big family. <laughs> we are one family, as DK says. Okay. By family, by isolated <laughs> units of the one family. <laughs> <laughs> Sparkles of the divine. <laughs> indeed. 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 Tell me about it. 